Scatter plots. Properties of scatter plots. Well, a scatter plot shows how closely two sets of data are related. The closer the sets are related, the closer the points come to forming a straight line. And we have some parts of a scatter plot. A scatter plot should include a title, labeled axes at equal intervals, and corresponding numbers are plotted as ordered pair. So it's often helpful to see how two sets of numbers or groups of people are related. Some things that are graphed together may be related and others may not. So for example, two sets of things that might be related are the number of dogs a person has and the amount of carpet cleaner they use. So let's look at a scatter plot of that. We have a scatter plot. The title is dogs versus cleaner. And we have two variables being compared. We have number of dogs along the x-axis and boxes of carpet cleaner used each month along the y-axis. So if we look at these ordered pair, we could see there's a person with one dog that uses one box of carpet cleaner a month, person with two dogs, two boxes of carpet cleaner, three dogs, two, a little bit more than two boxes of carpet cleaner, and four dogs, four boxes of carpet cleaner. So is there a relationship here? Well, it looks like as the number of dogs increases, the more dogs, the more uh, boxes of carpet cleaner used. And also the less dogs, the less boxes of carpet cleaner used. So as one increases, the other increases. And as one decreases, the other decreases. This is what we would call a direct, directly related. So if one set increases while the other increases, they're directly related. We would call this a positive correlation. So you want to write down positive correlation. And if one set increases while the other increases, they're directly related. That's called a positive correlation. Now, a negative correlation would be if one set increased while another decreases, they're inversely related. We would call that a negative correlation. So a negative correlation, like a negative slope, you're looking at points that the flow is going downward from left to right. And we're looking at one variable increasing and another variable decreasing. So for example, we have a science test with study time versus items missed. So we're looking at minutes studying along the x-axis and number of questions missed on a science test along the y. So we have a person that studied for 40 minutes and that order pair lines up with missing 14 questions. Person that studied 60 minutes missed like nine questions. A person that studied 70 minutes missed five. And a person that studied out here at 90 minutes missed three. So as the number of minutes studying increased, the number of questions missed decreased. So one variable increased while the other decreased. That's what we expect for a negative correlation. One variable was going up while the other one was going down. And this one forms almost a perfectly straight line, which makes it great to predict with. So we could say, how long would you have to study to miss no questions on the science test? Well, if we continue this line down here, it looks like at zero minute at uh, zero numbers missed, we'd be out here somewhere near 100 minutes. Well, what if we didn't study at all? What would we, what would we pre predict for number of questions missed? Well, zero um, minutes of studying, we'd be, predict to be somewhere up here at 16, maybe higher. Um, we don't have anything above that scale, but we're saying probably 16. So that would form perfectly, almost a perfectly straight line through here, which makes it really easy to use the scatter plot for prediction. And the line we're talking about drawing here is called a line of best fit. Now, if we graph something that's not related, it's just going to look random. So we have a scatter plot here showing the relationship between shoe size and IQ. And IQ is just an intelligence test. And we can see here, just as you would predict, there's no relationship between people's feet size and their intelligence. So it just looks like a bunch of random dots. And for no correlation, you can see random dots over the entire scatter plot or just random dots over part of it. But what we, what we don't see is a flow of points going upward or a flow from left to right of points going downward. We really have a hard time seeing either one of those things. So that makes us think that there's just no correlation, no relationship. And with these two variables, it makes sense to have no relationship. Now we have three types of correlation. 
we have a positive correlation. Looks like the points are flowing upward from left to right. We have negative correlation where we have a flow of points downward from left to right, like a negative slope. And we have the possibility of no correlation or no relationship where our points on our scatter plot, our ordered pairs just look random. So you should make sure you write down each of those different types of, of correlation that you can have positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation at all, no relationship. Now, what would we expect from a correlation like this? And we're not looking for exceptions, we're looking at in generalities. Um, in general, the relationship between your math test grade and your quarterly math grade. Well, we'd expect that to be positive, negative, or no relationship. Well, I would expect it to be positive because as your chapter test grades go up or your unit test grades go up, your quarterly grade goes up. What about the relationship between the age of adults and shoe size? Positive correlation, negative correlation, or no relationship? No relationship, because once you're an adult, your feet stop growing, so there's no relationship between your age and your size of your feet after you're about 18. How about hours of exercise versus IQ? Would we expect that to be a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no relationship? I would say no relationship because there's plenty of smart people that exercise a lot and plenty of smart people that don't exercise at all. How about years of education versus income? Well, the more educated you are, the higher the income, that's a positive correlation. I would expect illegal drug use versus suicide. That is a positive correlation. As illegal drug use increases, so do suicide rates. So that would be a positive correlation. Now, strong versus weak. What kind of relationship would I expect with if my points make almost a perfectly straight line? We know it's a positive correlation. And we could say more than just a positive correlation, we could say strong positive. And what about this scatter plot? While we still see a positive correlation, we see the flow of points is going up from left to right. It's just a weaker version. And we would still say that's a positive correlation. It's just a weak positive. So with a strong positive, we could, we could draw a line through this as the line of best fit. And we could draw a line of best fit, just a straight line through this flow of points. It's just there's going to be a little bit more spread out from the line. We could still draw a straight line or line of best fit. There's just a little bit more gap between each point and the line. Where a strong positive, if we drew a line, it's either going to be touching most points or really close to mo most points. Now, we could also have strong negative correlation where the line is going down or the flow of the points is going down from left to right, and they're really close to a straight line. So we'd call that a strong negative. And we could have a negative correlation that's a little bit more spread out, and that just shows a weak negative correlation. So items that are closely related are close to a straight line. The closer they are to the straight line, the stronger the relationship. So what kind of conclusions do we have? We have a scatter plot. It's a graph of two sets of data plotted together. Items that are directly related have a positive correlation, and items that are inversely related have a negative correlation. Items that are closely related are close to a straight line. And I hope that helps you guys with scatter plots. O-U-T spells out.